crowd of Virgin Islanders gathered in the breezeway of the Central Administration Complex on Monday, May 22nd to celebrate the accomplishments of the gold record holder for the 400-meter hurdler in Jamaica's International Invitational Meet, Mr. Kyron McMaster. Kyron, who returned to the island on Sunday, May 21st, after recording a world-leading 47.80 seconds in the 400-meter hurdles at Jamaica's National Stadium on Saturday, May 20th, was met with family, friends, and supporters, all waving the Virgin Islands flag with pride. The victory, which reverberated throughout the Virgin Islands, led to the following celebratory ceremony. Now, I note the intent of today's proceedings is obviously to hear from Mr. McMaster, Karen McMaster himself. But before he does, there's just a few things I want to bring to the forefront of Karen's performance. And I'm gonna to get to that. But before I do, I felt that it was important, or I should relate this to you guys. It was Saturday night, as you guys would know, that Karen ran this world leading time in his world leading race. And I was at my office trying my best to get on to Coach Samuels, Coach Dyke Samuels, because I looked at my watch, and I know the race was, um, was it 8.40, I believe, and I kept looking at my watch because it was like 8.38, 8.39, I, I, 8.40 just wouldn't come. And when 8.40 came, I said, okay, my phone's gonna ring, my phone's gonna ring, my phone's gonna ring, because I had been in communication with Dag um, quite a bit during the day. And to bring to light, Karen's achievements, achievement this afternoon, the phone call that I got, this is even before I spoke to Dag Samuels. The person that called me was Usain Bolt's manager. This had to have been maybe two, three, or four seconds after Karen had ran his race. Now, if that doesn't speak magnitude, tell me what does. All right, I think we should give Karen a hand for that. Now, it was during the course of the day because Dag had already contacted us and um, informed us that he was at the airport, he was heading out. It was Saturday, you know, everyone is doing their little bit of running, running around during the day. But I, I kept reaching out to Dag and saying, once he, once he confirmed that he had landed in Jamaica, Dag, do you have the heat sheet? He was like, no, not as yet. Well, I, was, I wanted to ask him, well, when are you going to get it? Because this is information we want to share with everyone else. And it was sometime during, I can't recall when, but he did send me an image of the heat sheet. And I looked very quickly at the names on the heat sheet, the heat sheet or the start list, if you want to call it that, of the race current is going to run. And I went through the names, and there were some names that started popping out very, very quickly. One of the first things I did on Saturday is that, well, after going to the office, is that I went on my computer, because we have a very vibrant WhatsApp group chat, BVI Athletics Association WhatsApp group chat. If you want to be um, made abreast of everything that's happening in athletics, that's where the information really starts. We, we put everything that we possibly can within our WhatsApp group chat, and then it's dispersed from there to Facebook and everything else. So I went on my computer and I started to take note because I said, Karen is about to run this race, and there, for lack of a better word, and excuse the top um, terminology, there are some quote-unquote big dogs in this race, if you know what I mean. And I said to myself, I said, Karen, I, I know the mindset, a former athlete myself, you know, you're going to your race and you're trying to focus, he's there with Dag, and I know Dag is definitely gonna put him in the mindset he needs to be to run this race. And I started to go through, and I felt it was important because what, we did, what I did is I, I held back the post until Karen had finished running his race, primarily because I wanted him to focus on his race and his race alone. It's the hurdles. The hurdles, 400 meter hurdles, it's one lap, if you haven't seen the video, 10 hurdles all the way around, okay? And I held back this post, but I'm gonna let you guys know because I sent it thereafter Karen had ran because I wanted people to understand the level and magnitude and ability of the persons he had competed against. And I'm gonna run through those names with you guys in no particular order, by the way. Name number one, a fellow that goes by the name of Eric Cray. Who is Eric Cray? Eric Cray is your Southeast 
Asian Games 400 meter hurdle champion and their national record holder. His personal best going into this race was 48.98 seconds, a pretty good time. He's also the South, the Asian, sorry, indoor 60 meter bronze medalist. So this is a guy that has already made it to the world stage and has continued to show that he is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to competition. Name number two, Jordan Andrade of the US. His stat says he was a 2015 Division I. If you guys don't know what Division I is, Division I is the, the bigger colleges in America. The, the, the bigger, the more populated, the 30,000, 40,000 um, per um, student population, populated campuses in the US. And he was a Division I silver medalist. You guys hear about NCAA championships? Well, he competed against America's best, and he grabbed a silver medal back in 2015. His personal best, 49-24. He's also a USA um, junior outdoor champion a, and a Pan Am Games silver, medal, silver medalist. Again, another competitor who has shown and indicated that, yes, they are a force, or I am a force, speaking in third person, to be reckoned with. The next name, a name that's very familiar to my good friend, Chiron. We did a video last night. He mentioned his name, I'll mention his name again. Um, Jahil Haid, you guys remember last year seeing Chiron run at World Junior Championships. The guy that won that race was this very same guy, Jahil Haid. And as Chiron pointed out to me, um, just last night, um, two-time world junior champion, two years back to back. That doesn't happen by fluke or by chance. That takes real hard work and real hard dedication. He did it. His best. As a matter of fact, Jahil Haid, who had already shown himself to Chiron in world junior championship that he was a force to be reckoned with, he ran a personal best in the very same race, race that Chiron ran. His new personal best after racing all Chiron McMaster is 48.52. That's what he had to do to try to keep up with Chiron. Bashan Jackson, US Olympic bronze medalist. We're talking about the Olympics. There are two things that happens that's on the grand stage in, in track and field. You have the Olympics, and later on during this year, you all need to tune into your TVs. It's gonna be on television. That's on World Championships. That's scheduled for this year in August. And I'm not sure if you guys know, but Chiron is already qualified to compete at that meet. And he will compete against the world's best. And this guy, Bashan Jackson, US Olympic bronze medalist, world championship, the very same meet that's gonna be held again this year in August. Um, he was a gold medalist at that meet um, before, running a time, his personal best time of 47.3 seconds. 47.3 seconds. I know we have our statistician Ray here with us, and he's gonna tell you what it takes or how many people in the whole entire world has run sub 48 seconds. It's not, a, it's not much. I'll leave that for my good friend Ray to expound upon. Javier Colson trains right over there in Puerto Rico, but he's a very decorated athlete. He's a Olympic bronze medalist, a world championship silver medalist, the very same meet, again, that's gonna be held in August. Pan Am Games gold medalist, CAC Games gold medalist, NACAC gold medalist, and he has a personal best of 47.72 seconds. Michael Tinsley of the USA, Olympic Games silver medalist with a personal best of 47.7 seconds. And this might sound very repetitive, but I'm doing this for a reason, because I want to ensure that you guys understand that the guys that Karen went up against in this race could medal at almost any event anywhere in the world, okay? There's another name here, Ricardo Cunningham, CAC Games, silver medalist, three times Jamaican national champion, and top eight um, uh, as far as NACAC is concerned, running a personal best of 49.66 seconds. That was the fleet of guys that Chiron was up against. And did he back off? We all saw the race. We have something special happening here. And I'm asking you guys, the wider BVI, to jump on board with the Athletics Association in giving Chiron the support that he truly needs. This doesn't happen every day. 
And I hope with August approaching, not too far from now, that we're back here again, hopefully doing the very same thing that we're doing today. In a sense, that gives you a, a fairly good view as to what Karen was up against. I'm going to move along because we want to hear from Karen this afternoon. To government, we know that you guys have continued to support BVI Athletics, and I hope and trust that Karen's accomplishment here today reinforces the need for you to continue to support BVI Athletics. And I won't stop there because I made it clear to my executive earlier today, as long as they put me on the podium, I'm going to reach out because we have a very large corporate BVI. And I'm also reaching out to you guys to come forth and offer your support to athletics. There's quite a bit of things happening in the athletic arena. We can use your support. You can see the results of what we're able to do with not very large um, funding and, and monies. And I'm sure with greater support from corporate BVI, we can definitely do a whole lot. So I'm making a plea I'm formally here with you guys this afternoon to help us, to help all youths to become the true athletes that they can um, possibly be. In closing, I just want to touch on one, two more points. Dag, we spoke only by chat today. I'm just as happy for you as I am for Kyron. You've been at this a long time, Dag. It's been, I try to calculate it today. It's got to be at least 30 something years. And if you look at Dag's career, give him a hand. Dag, if, if you don't mind, please stand so that everyone here can see who you are. This is Dag Samuels, Coach Dag Samuels. 30-something years, and Dag has, I mean, I, I had my, my short tenure um, with Dag. He's had the Kita Clients, the Deanne Crabs, and you can see that what Dag has been able to do is to show his potential in the coaching arena year after year after year after year. There's been a few years in between. But Dag, you're here again, and let me just formally say congratulations on your effort, but it doesn't stop here. We have a bigger plan, and you and I will sit down and talk about that a little bit more. But I must say congratulations um, to you, um, the same as I say congratulations to, to Brother Chiron. And then lastly, we had a little back and forth yesterday. We must have WhatsApped each other at least a thousand plus times yesterday. This is the executive, just trying to get things in place, because Chiron was originally supposed to be here yesterday. It didn't work out that way. But there's one fella that I want to mention, and I'm only point picking him out because I found that the way he came forth, he was so helpful. Um, Brother Wade Smith of the Customs Department, we... <laughs> we had a dilemma last night, Curran uh, was supposed to be here at three. By the time Curran got in, I think I got confirmation that he had landed in St. Thomas after 8.30, maybe going at nine. But guess what? By 10 o'clock, he was right here at the pay pack, thanks to um, cost, BVI Customs. And Wade, I finally say to Wade and his guys, you know, those guys, they react um, very quickly, and we're thankful for the, the, the assistance we got in bringing our wall 400 meter leading athlete um, back to the BVI. Thank you, guys. I also join in congratulating Kyron and Dag for this great accomplishment, uh, and the entire entourage that worked with him um, to do this. Just to briefly let you know why the Olympic Committee is here and why we are so um, involved with sports at this level, because this is not a game, this, is a, this was an event, but the accomplishment is such that um, we have to show our full support at all levels. <clears throat> uh, to, just to give a brief history of the BBIOC, our mission is to develop sport in the territory, grow the National Sporting Federation, develop the territory's elite athlete, and cover the attendance of qualifying athletes and their support teams to all major games. And we have quite a number of games coming up. Um, that um, our athletes are going to be attending. I'll just let everyone know. Um, Steve touch on a few of them. In 2017, we have the Commonwealth Youth Games in the Bahamas. Um, also, we have the OECS Championship in Grenada. That's this year coming up in addition to the World Championship that's going to be held in London. 
In 2018, we have the Commonwealth Games in the Gold Coast in Australia. We have the CAC Games in Barranquilla, Colombia. The Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires, Argentina. 2019, we have the Pan American Games in Lima, Peru. And of course, in 2020, we have the Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan. I am here to reiterate that the British Virgin Islands Olympic Committee stand fully behind all our athletes and our federation as we prepare to enter these major games. And I will just mention the athletes that competed. And I want you to remember these names because you'll be hearing them for years to come. And just to show you the progression of sports and how one event leads to another. The 2014 Youth Olympic Games was held in Neijing, China. And these are the names of the track and field athletes that attended that event. Deja Erickson, the 100 meter hurdles. Kayla Penn in the long jump. Lakeisha Mimi Warner, 800 meters. Nelda Hoggins in the 100 meters. Kyron McMaster, intermediate 400 meter hurdles. Akeem Bratcher, triple jump. Please remember these names. Kyron is a product of that group. And you, the rest of those names, you're going to be hearing from them as we progress. Now we get to Mr. McMaster and his great event. Um, for, well, everyone has a different experience of how they got informed about what happened. And I'm sure everyone in the crowd here has a story to tell. Uh, my story is that uh, I received a frantic call from Brenda Letsam Thai around 10, 1030 at night. I said, what, what happened here? Something is wrong. And I, after I spoke with Brenda, I hung up and I said, well, I don't know what's really happening, but something must be big. Then I, I saw a missed call from Honorable Myron Walwyn. I said, wow. Then I received a WhatsApp from my daughter with a picture of world leading time, Kyron McMaster. So I went to sleep thinking I was dreaming, and then I <laughs> wasn't sure what was happening. <laughs> Sunday morning, I, I, I woke up at 6 o'clock. My Cleve, Farrington, asked me if I knew what happened. I said, well, I think I saw a video. So I got up and I looked at a, I looked at a video on the Saturday night. I wasn't sure. So I said, let me look at this video again. So I looked at the video about five times on Saturday, on Sunday. And I am keep looking at this video and I'm saying I must be dreaming. This is not real. And well, today we are here to find out, and we have the proof right here that this really is real. It happened. Uh, <laughs> I would just like to personally thank Tyron for his great achievement, his family, his father here, his support. And of course, um, Steve mentioned Dag. Dag is an old warrior from the old school. He has been through many ticks and ten. He's still here, and he is producing. And he, he, this is big stuff. I mean, we, 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 when you think about it, that this athlete was produced locally and reached this level right here in the BVI, the eyes of the world is going to be on us. I don't know that what you're feeding up there, but I'm going to come up to the track myself and see your training, share Jules, see what's going on, because something special is happening up there. And um, I think we all should give them a big round of applause for that achievement. Uh, well, I was just close. I, I, I said I was trying to remember what analogy I can make. And I, I, I like um, music, so I listened to a tune from the late, great Lucky Dubey. It says, um, don't wake me up. And then he was singing in that about when um, South Africa was going through an out of apartheid. And he said, if I'm dreaming, don't wake me up. Don't tell me the truth because it will hurt. Well, um, Dag and Kyron, if I'm dreaming, don't wake me up till after 2010, 2020 with a gold medal in, well, <laughs> in Tokyo. <laughs> Thank you very much. I must give a special welcome to someone who has become a good friend of mine now. 
Mr. Kyron McMaster. I took an interest in Kyron very early um, when I got elected. I remember Kyron, me, I, I brought you and a couple of other persons to the prayer breakfast, remember that? Picked you all up and I dropped you all there and I brought you to the prayer breakfast with me. And I was showing off with my colleagues. I don't know if they understood what I was doing, but I wanted to let them know that I had a hand in shaping the young people of this country. So I brought them to the prayer, dinner, to the prayer breakfast with us so that we can expose them to things that are important. But I saw something in Chiron very, very early. He was talented. And some of us think that talent is everything, but it's not everything. It's what you do with the talent that you have. He's disciplined, very disciplined, very humble, very respectable young man. Give him a round of applause. I, I have time for Kyron, full of humility. And he got it from somewhere. We don't want to just say it's his father alone. I grew up with his father. And there are many stories that we can tell about the things we did in Ebenezer School in Seacoast Bay. But I also met his mother. A very lovely, beautiful, full of humility, very intelligent lady who I know instilled a lot of what Kyron has now in him, was done by his mother. And I believe I can put up a good argument that the athletic skills that we're celebrating now also came from his mother. Because when we were running sports day in Seacows Bay, and Anthony was in the race, with people like myself and the late Roger Hodge, we could drop Sidon and count to 20 in the middle of that race and he would not catch us. So he certainly didn't get the skills from, but he got some other things from my dear friend. <laughs> At least he got the last name. <laughs> but it's a good thing for the BVI. It's a good thing for our country. I, I, am, I am proud, I feel good. And I will tell you something about my colleagues. We're getting cussed off a little bit now in the community. And we deserve some of the cussing because we do some stupidness sometimes. We're not perfect. But every one of my colleagues love this country. You did not want to see the excitement on our group chat. Now we have good chat too, you know, with a thought. The excitement that was there when Karen achieved what he achieved. Because it's not just about athletics, it's saying that our country, the BVI, is coming into its own. And it's an excellent, excellent feeling. And it's good that the government in its wisdom, I wasn't a part of the government at that time. I was cussing them because they were doing some things I didn't like. I was on the other side them times there cheering on. But that athletic track was a good investment. That athletic track was a good investment in the young people of this country. And we've had some very good athletes in this country, athletics and otherwise. And it only shows if you make the investment in them, you can see the great things that can come out of them. Kyron came to see me, Kyron was it Wednesday? Came by on Wednesday. And I was seeing some other persons, and when I came out to him, he turned off. I called him back on the phone. I said, Kyron, where are you going? He said, man, I gone on a little hustle here to get some money to go to Jamaica. I said, Kyron, come back, man. Come let me talk. <laughs> and so he came back, and we, we settled some business there between us. But we went on with a conversation, and I asked him about the race. And he said to me, man, well, when are going to win this race? Easy. And if you looked at it, he won it easily too. <laughs> I 
But the conversation was also one where he started to, we started to talk and I was asking him about college and what you were doing and your strategy and so on. And he has a plan in his mind for what he wants for himself and his athletic career. But then he also mentioned to me that he is also concerned about the other athletes as well. And things that we can do to make things better for them so that they can reach to the level that he's at. And that shows that he's somebody who cares about people. I said to him, I said something to him that I prefaced by saying, I said, I'm going to say something to you, Kyron, that might sound selfish. You remember the conversation? But I'm not being selfish. I'm showing you something from a different perspective. Sometimes when you're heading somewhere, you can't carry everybody with you one time. It's too much weight for you to carry sometimes. I said to him, well, those behind, I will hold the strain for them. But the most important thing that you can do for those persons that you want to bring along is to break that glass ceiling for them. That's what I said to you. And I'm saying to you, go out and break that glass ceiling and bring home an Olympic gold medal here for the people of the Virgin Islands. And I believe with every fiber of my being that you can do it and you will do it. I want to thank Dag. Dag, our old disgusting man. Dag, they gave me so much trouble. What a Dag. What a man named Dag. Dag, what I want to say about you? Loves what he does. Loves it very, very much. We follow from time to time because sometimes Dag will come with a little idea about what he wants to do at the track. And he will come to me and we'll talk about it and I said, Dag, it's a good idea, yes. Um, you know what you want to do. And Dag will take my little words as approval and turn off and do things without me even telling him he could go ahead. But it's because he loves what he's doing. And I want to celebrate you today, Dag. I want to celebrate you very much, Coach Dag. And all the other coaches. Because it says that you guys are really talented because with the very limited resources that we have, and you can still turn out at least like Cairo, and it says that you are truly gifted and truly talented. And we want to thank you all very much. I had a very good meeting today with Ephraim, Ephraim Penn, and Brenda Tyler. Summer. We were speaking about a program that actually was brought to us by the Olympic Committee called the Elite Athlete Program, where an investment is made in collaboration with the government for athletes of exceptional promise that we will match a certain amount equal to what the Olympic Committee will give for each athlete to provide support for them because this, this is a serious thing. And we don't want our athletes out there where they could be at risk of being injured just trying to make a living. If we can help them to get the training that they need and the support mechanism in place, that they can concentrate on what they're doing and do it well, I think it'll be good for the country. And that is something I'm going to be meeting with my colleagues on. I know they've already indicated, all of them, um, without fail, their full support in putting this program together, um, Ephraim, and we'll get it done soon. And I'm going to exploit this afternoon because I know they're all happy now. <laughs> right, Premier? Whatever I put on the paper, they will give me nothing. <laughs> but it's all about, about love for country. And we want to, again, um, commend you, Kyron, and let you know that we, we are all very proud of you. And we're expecting very great things from you in the future. Thank you very much. We are here to a very special event this afternoon. And I am so pleased to be here. Of course, I heard the news um, the day before. And I did see a video of the, uh, of the finals coming in. And I was duly impressed. I must say one of the reasons that I'm also very, very happy to be here and to be part of this celebration is as his mommy reminded me a while ago, I assisted her in bringing Karen into this world. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> and so I feel proud that of what, what, what is achieved today myself. Yeah. I heard uh, Mr. O'Neill speak about his disposition a few minutes ago. Uh, he's always willing to speak to people, to smile. And he's taken that from his dad, I know that. Mr. McMaster is always you know, welcoming and smiling. And, and I know he didn't um, take the height from Mr. McMaster, <laughs> but, um, but that disposition, that friendly, welcoming disposition, certainly from him. And also the idea that uh, Mr. McMaster, who have been dealing with it uh, in the Ministry of Communication, is somebody who once given a task he wants to see completed and completed well, right? So he doesn't just sit around and do stuff, he just gets to it and get it done. And this is attitude I assume that uh, Mr. Kyron has also inherited from his dad, you know? He set his mind on becoming the holder of the world record in the 400 hurdles, and he's um, achieved what is Jesus for, and well has way to further for greatness, right? So I want to thank the, um, the BVI Olympic Committee and the Athletic Association for all that they have done, and DAG particularly, for all they have done to train our young people, and I was speaking about Karen in particular, to be able to help them to achieve what he's achieved today, right? And I also want to say that um, well, congratulate the Ministry of Education. I know the Minister of Education is very keen on doing whatever it has to do when it concerns youth and their progression in life. So I want to congratulate him and the ministry. I know that um, there are several reasons why this is an important event for the British Russians. First of all, it shows that with determination, and uh, with putting our effort into it by the athletes, by the government, and by the other associations, that we can achieve greatness. It's not just for big countries. Small countries can achieve greatness. And when I heard um, the other, Mr. Uh, McMaster said, that it was, um, what the guy name again? No, no, no. The, um, the coach uh, for, you seen both, who called him. I think that was, that was, um, that was telling. And I was very impressed by that, right? And um, it shows that BV Islanders can do what they can do, need to do to achieve their full potential in life, as one of my colleagues was saying, once they get the proper encouragement. And I want to say that um, government, my government will continue to give that encouragement that is needed for children. Apart from their own personal fulfillment, of course, this helps from a tourism point of view because it puts BVI on the map. Somebody said it a while ago. And sports tourism is one way to get us on the map in terms of tourism. I expect that people be reading about Karen and reading about the BVI um, from today and will wonder who is he and where it is and hopefully want to come and see the place where this little boy grew up, right? <laughs> I just want to finish off by saying that um, as a government, we see the improvement and the, of the young people in this country as one of the primary goals uh, of, of this government. And that's why we're so much interested in education. And that is why we're also interested in um, youth entrepreneurship. And this is something we've been working on over the past several couple of years. And just last weekend, weekend before, there was a program at the HLSCC College, HS8 Lovely South Community College, where she's showing off the entrepreneur ab abilities of uh, young people in this, in this BVI. So we are as a country, our young people are full of talent. All we got to do is to help them to exploit it. And this I promise to you as the leader of this country. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for coming out today and supporting me. That's good. Okay. Um, where to start? Uh, first of all, everyone asks me from time I want to raise, why, why was I so confident going into the race? Mainly because I trust the training, 
and trust my coach in what we do on and off the track. Um, the first thing I know, this is when I notice we, we have to rumble. When we got on the plane, it was the majority of the athletes, and you can ask coach. I turned to coach, I said, well, coach, something wrong? He said, what happened? He said, all the athletes sponsored by Nike, Adidas, Puma, I got crocs. <laughs> he said, well, if you handle business in Jamaica like we come to, that can change eventually. I said, all right, that's the next reason I should win. <laughs> we gone to the warm-up track now. Uh, this was the, the Friday. No, again on the bus, again we have professional athletes. I think I was the only athlete there that wasn't professionally signed by our company. And I, all of we congregate in one spot, putting on our shoes, warming up. My shoe string about to bust. <laughs> and they just pull out some brand new spikes and shoes. I say, well, Jesus. <laughs> Coach started to laugh. So, you know, um, we did what we had to do at that day. We went back to the hotel. The day of competition, though, uh, this was my first time at a competition where we competed so late in the night, so the preparation was mentally there. So when we got to the track now, again, them in fancy gears, and I my little two cent gears, you know? And coach turned to me, and coach asked me if I ready. I said, yeah. You yeah, know, coach one walk, give me a hellacious walk out before we start to do what we have to do. Um, we warm up, and I actually nearly missed the race because we warm up, and this they did the final call, and coach went to check me, and you have to check him before you run. And there's this room where the athletes go before they they go out onto the field called the car room. I go there, and I tell the official I came to for the 400 hurdles. He says, "Sure, take a seat over there." I waited. I see no other athletes coming in. I say, oh, okay. I intimidate them. I'm about to win this. An easy win. <laughs> and then I noticed the other athletes from the other event came coming in. And then at the same time, Kojan was on their way back to get me to tell me the 400 hurdles about to start. So I don't know if you're watching a live stream at the very moment when they are about to start the race is when I run in onto the track. And then at that moment, change clothes, get in the blocks. And the commentator gave me a new name. Uh, I don't know if you have heard the name. Danger Man. <laughs> yes. Um, so at that moment, you know, I just trust the process of me training six days a week, 12 hours a day. Uh, yeah, very hard training, it's not easy. And once I knew I executed the race how I should do, I should come out on top. And that's what I told coach. And for anyone that knows me and my coach relationship, you could ask my fellow training partners, before we go to our competition, I ask coach, coach, what is the time I'm going to run? Believe it or not, coach said, I'm going to run 47. Coach said the, the slowest I will run is 48.3 seconds and the fastest I will run is 47.3 but I see you running 47.8 seconds. Now at that point my personal best before that was 
point six. I say, Koji, you're crazy, my man. <laughs> you know, I, I about to chop off a whole second. No, man. He turned to me, he said, boss, you're going to do it. After I finish the race, the commentator said 47.79. They wrap me up a point second, which I want to get a meet record. Yes. They change it to 47.8, and he is over there smiling. The happiest man at that moment, happier than me. And right there and then, went over, hung my coach. <laughs> because, you know, because we come from a small island, we underrated a lot. And we've been through a lot. So for me to do that under him, <laughs> that says a lot. So I want to stand here today and say that I love him and I thank him for all his accomplishments that we've done. And is, this is just the beginning of something we're doing. We have much bigger plans ahead of us. And last but not least, my parents. You know, many, many times, you know, my father and me bake a lot because he used to say, you know, track is going to take you, but you have to focus. Sometimes I may not focus a lot. So he used to be on my back a lot with being disciplined in it and going and drive for it. And my mom for changing my meal plans, because I used to eat a lot of junk food. <laughs> you know, so now she has me eating healthy. So I would like to thank them and everyone. Thank you. You have been watching a GIS highlight program, celebratory ceremony for star athlete, Karen McMaster. For the Department of Information and Public Relations and the Ministry of Education and Culture, I have been your GIS host, Bria Smith, and it has been a pleasure having you with us. For more government news, visit the government website at www.bvi.gov.vg or follow us on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter at BVI Government. The games in the four hurdles for lane number one. 49.35 is the world championship qualifying standard. 48.31 is the fastest time in the world this year. Do we get a world lead? I expect faster than 48.6, Hubert. They're in the blocks for the men's 400 meters hurdles. Cray, Andrade, High, Jackson, McMaster, Coulson, Tinsley, and Cunningham. Set. Slight hush in the set position now. And away they go, the first time of asking. Clean start by the entire field. Colson likes to go up fast and hard. And already he is looking to prompt the issue of Brashawn Jackson. Is right there in the middle of the pack. Moving hard on the outside, we have got Tinsley. Cunningham is trying to stay with the early pace. Colson, as usual, is right up there in the mix. Jackson has been left back in the middle of the pack. Hyde is back there as well, has them catching up to do at this stage with 150 meters to go. And uh, Jackson trying to come forward, in the middle of the pack. McMaster, Colson is trying to come back. Hyde is also trying to come forward. McMaster, Hyde, Colson, the rest have been left back there. And uh, what a performance this is. Kyron, McMaster, 47-79, the flash time, 47-79. 47, now 4780, that's a word leading time as well. 4780 for McMaster. A wonderful performance. 4780, top time for 2017. Being thrown down by that competitor, Kyron McMaster from the British Virgin Islands. We call him the danger man and he has delivered third at the World Juniors last year, has improved with every race.